I'm Matt Bronger, and I love my kid, but the split-second hard left turn from Perfect Little Angel to Demon of Vengeance, uh, three-year-old tantrum, I, I-, I could do without it. <laughs> From Wondery, I'm Chris Garcia. I'm Megan Gailey. And I'm Kurt Brownholer. And this is I Love My Kid, But... Welcome to I Love My Kid, but it's your uh, it's your parenting show where you're not going to get any advice. Nope, not from us. There is no <laughs> advice to be given here. <laughs> I'm in need of some. <laughs> we, we all really are in need of advice if you have any. <laughs> Maybe we should rebrand the show. <laughs> yeah, please call, call it and help us. us. <laughs> we need <laughs> advice. I got a tarot card reading this weekend. Whoa. And the one, you know, they're like, do you have a uh, there's something, do you have a question? Yeah. And I was like, should I have a second kid? And oh. she's like, I don't, okay, I'll shuffle the deck. <laughs> wow. It's like too much, you know, people want to be like, how's work? <laughs> what did the, what did what, the what happened? reading yeah. say? Yeah. She said, I need to take a beat. <laughs> <laughs> This week, our guest is Matt Bronger, uh, and we're talking about daycare, the place we drop our kids off every day for hours, yet we have no idea what goes on there. (laughs) I've known Matt for a very long time. I think I met him, like, right after I started doing stand-up. I'm excited to chat with him. Um, But, of course, what we'd like to start with is a, a little thing we call, around these parts, circle time. So it's time for us to circle up and tell a story from our parenting life. And I believe, Megan, you will lead us in circle time today. I am going to. Okay. Um, I'd like to preface this by saying <laughs> I will be talking about um, my son's daycare. And I know the three of us, we've talked to offline and been like, how do we talk shit about things that may hear it? And I'm not going to be talking <laughs> shit. Um, it's clear when I'm talking shit and this won't be talking shit. But it's like. Daycare, caregivers, our families, they make our lives possible. Yeah. But we've also got some notes. <laughs> <laughs> and they've got notes for me, yeah, too. Yeah. Like, that's what, like, when we had the nanny, I would always, like, say to CJ, I'd be like, I wonder what she, what we're doing that she thinks is insane. Yeah. Like, wh- we probably have, we, we've we had Conrad in the wrong size diaper since he left the newborn stage. <laughs> like, he is in basically adult size <laughs> diapers because we just kept sizing up. And then I, like, looked at the weight range and I'm like he's like 15 pounds below the diaper we have him in (laughs) and they've been sending him home from daycare in the correct size diaper and we're like no we like those big boy diapers so we send him to school in a giant one and then he comes home in an appropriate one so it's like they think I'm weird so CJ is usually the one that drops off Conrad and picks him up they're both flashy dressers, Conrad and CJ. Conrad will be sometimes, you know, in like a cute outfit, and then CJ will go and drop him off and be in a full head to toe Lakers uniform, basically. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and like they had like a Father's Day tea or something and CJ was like none of the other dads talked to me and he was like I think they thought I was like a teenager and it's like (laughs) you're 36 like I don't think they thought you were a teenager from the beginning he goes those two gals at the front desk they're funny and I'm like who (laughs) who are you talking about like I'm like there's really not that much interaction we like type in a code and then I bring them back and then I leave like I, you're getting you're getting funniness from the front desk gals, and he's like, "Oh yeah, well we like talk about like the Lakers and Kobe and murals and Filipino stuff," and I'm just like, "Okay, whatever." <laughs> and so I can tell that he has a bond with one of them yeah. for sure. And when basketball was still going on, he was telling them that he was going to one of the games. Like, they were like, what are you doing for the Lakers game? And he was like, well, actually, um, I'm going to the game. And the one he has the bond with goes, are you rich? (laughs) (laughs) Which is a hilarious question. You know exactly how much we pay for childcare, And we're not rich, but we're attempting to be rich. (laughs) And so they have this thing. Like a few weeks ago, he like comes home. I like see something on the table and I'm like, what's that? And he's like, oh, well, I don't want to say your name. We'll call her Natasha. Yeah. Okay. He's like, Natasha gave me a present. What? (laughs) The woman who works the front desk at our son's daycare gave my husband (laughs) a present. What was the present? Stickers that she makes. 
So it was a homemade present as well. And I saw I one of the I saw one <laughs> sticker and I'm like, oh. And then like over the course of the next few days, I see like it was like a package of stickers that like she made uh-huh. and like gave to him. What? And I just was like, I don't I, it's clearly innocent. They are stickers. <laughs> they are stickers. Stickers of what? Stickers. stickers of what? We're not sure yet. If yeah, innocent, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Kobe Bryant. Oh, wow. okay. Kobe so it, but, but like, it's so a, it's on. It's on, on brand. It's, it's on, on brand, brand for, the, for their shared but it interests. It is a deep. It is a deep connection. Uh huh. Um, it's a deep connection. <laughs> it's got sticker level. It's a deep connection. <sighs> Obviously, I've been going to pick up Conrad a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not even being sassy. Like I'm also trying to like. I'm getting in. Like, I'm like, what's your name? Oh, my God. Love this. Da, da, da. And and she's also Filipino. And so once when I was bringing Conrad out, she was like, there's my cousin. And I'm like, if you come for my son and you come for my husband, we're going to have a fucking problem. <laughs> but instead, I embraced it. And so whenever I see her, I'm like, Conrad's cousin. <laughs> have I got have I gotten a present? No, <laughs> got nothing. What I love about all daycare, all schooling is that it is such a black box. Mm-hmm. Like you drop them off and then you pick them up and it's just like, what ha- Tell I'm always like, tell me one thing mm-hmm. that occurred today. They're always just like, I don't know. <laughs> and it's just like, you can't name, you were there for seven hours. Yeah. Just one event that happened in the span of seven hours. Just please, I don't know. <laughs> I, you're like, and then for Gus, we, we, we brought him to this camp, and it's a camp. He would come back, and it was like an outdoor camp, but he would come back. Literally, you could just see, like, his eyeballs, <laughs> and he was just covered in mud from head to toe, and he was, like, soaking wet and muddy, and that's, like, their deal. That's what happens there. And dirty camp. <laughs> it's a Call dirty drop camp. Drop your kid off for them to get dirty as shit. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing is, like, your kid's going to get dirty. And so they're like, Gus... Did you play in the mud today? I don't know. <laughs> just to do it dirt. I mean, he's kind of like pleading the fifth. Like, yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. I'm not going to incriminate myself. Our thing right now is that everyone in Sunny's grade has gone up a, a classroom. Oh, uh-huh. So all our friends are next door. And so Sunny, oh, yeah. who's already tall, is a, already like a whole head taller than all the kids. And she just misses her friends. And all the pictures of Sunny, it's, it's only been like a week. But yeah. are her fingers through the fence no! saying hi to her best friend? And it looks like it's a freaking, it looks Jail. like the Berlin Wall. It looks like Sunny's in East Berlin. And she's like, oh, Fraulein, my place. When is she going to get to go up? In like a week. It's, it's, only, okay. there's, there's, oh, it's oh. only two weeks. It's only a small thing. But, but it like, is that's I an eternity it. for it a is. kid. Oh. Yeah, that's fifty oh percent of their life. But we love daycare, and they we do an incredible service. Yeah. Exactly. Thank um, you. We want to thank you to all it. of our care providers and also the teachers out there. Big shout out to teachers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But <laughs> but what the fuck is going on? <laughs> all right, you heard him at the top of today's show. He is a actor. Stand-up comedian, writer, producer, storyteller. He's also the dad of a three-year-old daughter. Please welcome to the show the wonderful and fantastic Matt Bronger. Thank you, Kurt. How Thanks for having you? me, guys. Absolutely. Hey. Welcome, buddy. I'm so psyched. I, I love you guys in, in very special, different ways. And <laughs> it was one of those things when this show came out, I was like, hell yes, because I need I always need new podcasts. And I do enjoy listening to podcasts by friends. And Chris Garcia and I are part of a group called The Party Parents that we, we cool joke party with. parents, cool Whoa. party parents, because we just, CPP and by party we mean uh, Matt will sneak us shots in the kitchen That's and right. we'll be in bed by seven. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah great. Um, so we've been talking earlier uh, in the open, as you heard, about daycare and I mean, like, what well, what has been your experience with daycare and Rose? Uh, it, it it's awesome. Like our daycare we take her to is like from heaven. They're incredible. It's this woman who's a grandmother, and she it's her daughters and then some other women as well. And and it's been around since the 80s. It's like a house. It takes up like a quarter of the street in the wow. back area. And bigger kids are in the back, smaller uh-huh. kids yeah, are in the front. And Rose is always like, I go the back. And I'm like, okay, you go, let's walk you back there. They're going to walk you to the front, but not me. So you do it. 
<laughs> but they're awesome. And and it was scary because I had Rose, uh, she was born in 2020. And then all of that year, I was either taking care of my wife or looking after Rose. And then most of 2021. And then when she turned one, she's her birthday's in August. We're like, okay, then we take her to daycare. But we we're still in the thick of things. We we're still in the thick yeah. of COVID and everything. And I remember being backstage with uh, Greg Fitzsimmons, comedian we all know. And his kids are grown. They're like in college or something. Yeah. And I remember just having this dad to dad talk. And I was like, I'm scared to take her anywhere because of COVID and because of, like we said, the black hole of daycare. Yeah. And I think, I was like, is it too much of a risk? And he's like, dude, I think it's too much of a risk to not put her in daycare. Yeah. Like, that kid needs to socialize. Yeah. All she's had is you for a solid year. Mm -hmm. Like she has to be around other kids. Yeah. And it was just boom, off to the races. Like best thing. That she, somebody could have said to you. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, because it's like, that. especially after COVID, because especially with COVID, you were, it was just like, all right, that's it. We're just in here. Mm -hmm. It's just us. And yeah. now we need to protect. And there was just this idea of like, protect, protect, protect. Yeah, yeah. And that's so great that that could just like open it up for you mm -hmm. and, and allow it. Yeah. It, it was perfect for her. It was the hardest thing in the world for me. It <laughs> yeah. is really because, hard. I, there's yeah. like, it's kind of yeah. guilt inducing too, to be like, well, I mean, we're on strike right now. It's yeah. like, I mean, I guess he could be at home. Yeah. But, like, I do, he is happy there. And mm -hmm. he has yeah. his little friends, and they do water play Wednesday. Yeah. So then you're sort of, like, rationalizing right. that, like, this is the best thing for them, mm -hmm. but it's still hard and you don't actually know for sure. I remember taking her to daycare and I just started crying like first day and I was like in the car and my wife's like are you okay? Like like really? <laughs> Should I pull over? And I was like I'll be fine and I, I was like I think she's going to freak out and my wife's like I think you're going to freak out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I basically like brought her to the door and it, it, I was dramatic on the level of those dudes that went away to war uh -huh. and giving their child to another family <laughs> and being like you have a better life with you. <laughs> Her. And the kid's like, Dad, no! And the, she did not do that at all. No. Just went into this, this Latina woman was like, okay, bye bye. The door just slammed in my face. And I'm just standing there like, I, uh, uh, just like crying, looking at a, at a wall with cameras on me. And I could, I know those women are inside, like just being like, oh God. And why, I got in the why car. Why is the big man crying? Why is the big man? The big gringo they're, man. They're shooing the kids away he's, from the viewfinder. He's, he's like, don't Tesla look at that what happened. That six foot four crying monster. <laughs> and my, my wife drove me home and I was like, I have to take a walk. And I did. I walked and it was like the breakup walk. Like I was like wiping my tears and everybody Aww. I walked by I thought I was insane. Uh -huh. And I just get this text on my phone of her playing with a little girl at a little, little table Aww. and so happy. And But of course, just like Rose looking at the camera like, fucking what? Who are you? <laughs> like, why are you taking a picture? I'm with my friend. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's so much vitriol in her eyes. I and it just soothed me. And I remember <laughs> I sent it to Chris and Chris was like, they look like Pixar characters. <laughs> like their heads are as big as their bodies. Yeah. But I honestly, that picture was literally like morphine after an injury. It was just like, oh, Oh, she's fine. She doesn't need me at all. <laughs> but I don't great. think I don't even think that's why you were crying. Yeah, no, no, you're right. You know, it was, it was it's like you myself. knew she was gonna be totally fine. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. The idea of like uh, feeling bad for bringing, I believe, I remember that in the beginning, mm -hmm. and now it's like if it's it's Monday, like uh, Saturday and Sunday were so hard. Yeah. <laughs> that Monday's just like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm running away yeah. now. Oh, yeah. 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 Joe Coy told me when he started in daycare, his kid in daycare, he would go every day and eat lunch with his son, and his son would you... cry every day, and then the day care people were like you have to stop coming yeah yeah, yeah you have yeah. to stop and he's like oh god because right. he's upsetting the kid yeah because he was course. just like oh i'm doing the right thing but it was that thing where if they gave me the option i would go eat lunch every day with her but it's like don't, don't. Yeah. that's right. not don't. helpful for them. i remember i always think about see when i would see my mom if i ever saw my mom mm -hmm. in the middle of the school day like in kindergarten yeah. or first grade yeah it would like break worlds right i'd be mm -hmm. like what is <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. you <laughs> are here no you don't this is not the universe for you, you know? Yeah. And then I would be like, Kid, free me, free yeah, me! Because yeah, yeah, there's yeah. that like jail yeah. feeling of Sometimes school. Sometimes we'll show up early and I'll, I'll just see Sunny. She doesn't know I'm there. I'm just watching from the door and I'll see her. And this one time uh, I showed up and someone was like, all right, Sunny, put the books away. And she was like, okay. And she just went and grabbed a bunch <laughs> yes. of books and put them back. And I was like, who's this bitch? She doesn't do this at Dude. home. She doesn't pick one thing up. Dude. Oh, she'd be, 
<laughs> a plus kid at school and being that, a butt that's, rat? That's kind of why I want to get I'm in there because I'm like, what's thing. your secret? <laughs> like, uh -huh. how are you getting him to eat eggs when he spits eggs and throws them at me when I'm like, this is special? Well, you know, yeah. they say that 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 thing, right? It's like the kids are on their best behavior at school. Yep. So then when you pick them up and they come home and they're just pieces of shit, <laughs> yep. that it's just like them being like, I like, I'm comfortable with you, so I'm gonna shit on the floor. But like, that's <laughs> stupid. Yeah. Kids are stupid. They are. Because I, it's like, yeah. yeah, guess what? That lady at daycare, she's not gonna buy you anything. Yeah. I'm going to buy you stuff. You I'm are transactional. I'm going to yeah. send you to college. Yeah, you think I, she's sending you to college? Yeah. No. I pick up my kid every day and I drop her off every day and she has all these women there that she looks up to that are pure authority. So when I show up and she yeah. gets in the car and is like, fuck you, man. Drive me home. <laughs> like, it's literally that. Do you, um, <laughs> do you have a special connection with any of the women that work there? Uh, yes, there are okay. two. Okay, all right. Uh, there are two, well, there are two that are kind of, I see the most. Uh-huh. Especially the one that I text directly. Her name is Tanya. And you she text is, her directly? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's a And channel. a couple FaceTimes at night. Not a big, <laughs> Not deal. A big deal. Okay, all right. Texting, yeah. wow. But I don't bother them. I always make sure it's like, yeah. I'll just give you the information you need. Yeah. You know, like tomorrow I'm picking her up early to go get on a plane. And so I was like, here you go. Like, it's not this, like, so Tanya, what's going on? How is she being okay? No, I never waste her time. <laughs> I but wish yeah, I had this I type of relationship. We have one lady. There's always. I feel like every daycare has at least one kooky lady, you yeah. know. And we have this kooky one in in Sunny's room, and she's like, her eyes. I I don't. I've never seen her blink. And I was like, how is Sunny doing? She's like. Sunny was a bad girl or no. something, and I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> but she speaks kind of like um, a witch and because she's oh. like. Latina, I, I will not complain because I'm scared she's going to put a hex on our family. Yeah, you like, I think she's going to give it like uh, malojo or like, like yeah. give us something. And I'm like, I will not nope. complain about don't it. But she, don't cross the bruja. <laughs> Please don't cross the bruja. So I just kind of go, hi, how are you? And yeah. she's like, Ah, uh, better before Sunny arrived. Like, she's not that bad, but it's always like, my kid's an angel, and I know it. Well, that, but that reminds me that the daycare that I hear to, they, they speak nothing but Spanish to these kids. So oh, Rose nice. Rose is already fluent in Spanish. Wow. And my wife speaks Spanish, and I speak no Spanish. What? And she won't, and Rose code switches. You better she goes no home, way. and I'll be like, uh, Rosa, que es eso? You know, point to something, and she'll just look at me like, nah, man. Like, you're oh not God. one of us. You're, you know? you're Does she speak? Us? I can't believe that Rose speaks better Spanish Dude, next time you Sunny. see her, just start talking to her like you talk wow. to a relative or your mom. She just talks to my wife like, boom, boom, boom. <sighs> Never we, with me. Uh, I'm just like, this is This effed. is like a white woman's superpower. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> she can complain in two languages. I know. <laughs> we tried this thing where I, I was like, all right, Val, I'm going to speak Sunny in only in Spanish. And you speak to her only in English. And then same thing. We're like, I I would be like, mira, Sunny, un pejero. And she's like, what? And I was like, es un pejero. And she's like, nah, man, uh, mommy says that's a doggy. Like, I, don't know. I was like, un pejero tiene una cola y dos orejas grandes. And she's like, do you need to go to the hospital, bro? Like, she just Your doesn't know I'm broken? trying to teach her Spanish, so she thinks I'm dumb. Uh, Matt, we uh, we found this, uh, this, this wand in the trash, and we call Great. it the struggle wand. Okay. We got it out of a dumpster. And when you're holding it, you're allowed to tell us about anything you are struggling with yeah. parenting-wise okay. right now. Currently. Currently. Yeah. So it's kind of like the conk. When you hold it, you have the power. And so I would like to give you the struggle wand, okay. Matt. Bonger. We sanitized it. So the thing I'm struggling with is one of the, the, the there's a reassuring thing that it's just the answer is I'll never know. I feel like I read something once where it said, to be a parent is to be in a constant state of grief because you're always missing this kid that's now gone. Uh -huh. Like Rose is literally more articulate this week than she was last week. Yeah. And I remember saying to my wife at one point, hey, remember when we'd get her up in the morning and she's a baby and she'd just go, meh, 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 meh. Aww. She's trying to say milk. Oh. And my, Kara's eyes almost filled. She's like, Fuh. and it's that feeling of that kid's gone. My struggle is, am I playing with my kid enough? Because, mm -hmm. you know, she plays great by herself, and that's good, but uh, she's also manipulative. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we'll be at a party, and she'll want to stay inside the house, and all the other kids are outside. And yeah. we'll come out, come party. You know, dad's out there. That's where the beer is. Come on, kid. <laughs> oh, but she's just like, Dada, will you come in and play with me? And you're like, Aww. fuck. And you're like, but I know what you're doing. You just want to stay inside. 
You don't want to be outside, so yeah. it's that you thing You don't even of, want to play with right, me. Right, right. Yeah. But it's that thing where you do have that feeling of, I'm being chosen. I get to sit with you. I get to play. Mm-hmm. And I have this thing where I used to have nightmares when I was a kid where I was missing out on things. Mm-hmm. Like there's a party going on and I'm not there. Yeah. I'm on an empty street. I'm by myself. I think it's pretty common being an only child. Mm-hmm. You know, one yeah. thing being an only child taught me is how to make friends pretty easy. So, like, it, 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 it's one of those things where she's got to have her own journey and I know I'm saying a lot of things at once here, but it's one of those things where I just, I have this fear of ever, ever neglecting her. And I, I don't think I am. And I don't think my wife is either because we're always going to be like, hey, we're right here and stuff. But I did see this thing recently to fucking tie this up in a goddamn <laughs> bow that said, like, if your kid talks back to you, questions your authority, all that stuff at that age, it's a good thing because that means that kid feels loved and that kid feels safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like, that, okay, cool, cool. I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. I will say that it... Whether I know the truth or I don't know the truth, it is a struggle. And that's yeah. what I'm saying. That's great. Yeah. Like, and also, I would just say to you, Matt, yeah. because of the fact that you have thought about that mm-hmm. at least once, then you are not, you are not <laughs> doing, man? You are yeah, not right, doing it right. wrong. You're yeah. doing it right. Yeah. yeah, yeah thank that's you. Exactly. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> and as someone who's seen you be a dad a lot from the very beginning, Matt, you're a great dad. Thanks, man. And you, the too. Fact to, you too. I mean, GD. You, you are such a wonderful dad, and you're so devoted to Kara and Rose. It's just so sweet to see and I mean these are natural feelings to have as a dad and this is not an advice show but you're a great dad thanks buddy great dad Matt, what we love to do at the end of the show is uh, a little something called Time Out. Yes. Where each of us choose something about parenting and put it in a Time Out. Great. And so we'll all go first and then you'll go last. You're awesome. Megan? I have to say Time Out puking. Puking. I feel like every episode I (laughs) I could say Time Out puking. I get puked on so much. CJ never gets puked on. And, and like, I'm not even, it, it truly, like, I got puked on at 1045 last night. Like, Conrad was coughing. I was, like, elevating. I go in there, and he spit up a little bit, and then I'm, like, soothing him. And then it's just everything he ate for the day is just dumped on me at 1045 oh. on a Sunday night. And it's, like, fine, but it's getting to the point where I'm, like, why don't you puke on dad? Because he's bigger surface area. Yeah. Yeah. He's got easier target. Yeah. Yeah, he's got like way more fun bullseyes on his shirt. You know, like you could you could puke on a big dog shirt. Doesn't that sound fun? That I'm like, why do you only puke on a mama? All right, I'm next. I'm dad gonna brain. put I'm gonna put um there's a very specific one. Naps at preschool uh, because and I'm specifically talking about the time when your child turns about four to five and that's somewhere around where they get they don't want to take a nap anymore or they don't need it every day but w- if they do take it they just dive in and do like two hours and then do not go to bed at night and we're just at that point with Gus where he's now napping far too long at, at preschool um, but then he you know he stays up so late uh, and he's just like no way I'm I'm just hanging out and it's been driving us crazy and I know that I have mm. one more year of this to look forward to yeah. so that's my time out uh, my time out is I'm gonna put dad splainers it's like it's very specific I'm gonna put oh, uh, Dad splainer, like these forlorn prophecy dad splainers uh-huh. uh, on timeout. I don't yeah. know if you have encountered these, but they've happened since Val was pregnant. There'll always be a dad that's like, oh, you're gonna be a dad, huh? Well, get your sleep now. Better get that Which sleep in a, before you the. You can't stock <laughs> sleep. I know, I know, and it's, it's so frustrating, sleep. and it's not helpful. It's just like, why do I need to sleep? It's like it, they're trying also, to give that, advice, that but it's just making me stress. Of course, he doesn't do shit for that kid. It's always the guy that's like, uh, oh, wait, I was struggling to get Sunny in the car, and this guy's like, oh, how is she? And I was like, uh, okay, guy at Stater Brothers parking <laughs> lot, <laughs> uh, and he's like, I got a kid, and I was like, oh yeah, she's uh, she's two and a half. She's like. <laughs> Wait till she turns three. Shut Ugh. up. How old's your kid? Three. <laughs> okay, it's six months. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Wait till six that, that, it, Maybe you're a shitty dad and your kid sucks. How about that? <laughs> Maybe that. she'll be cool at three. What's your problem? There's that thing too where people are, are as parents are like, I have it harder. Oh, you yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I've had people be like, oh, one is nothing. Yeah. 
like yeah. about having a one kid, and yeah. it's like that's so dismissive. It's that's so, so rude. It is absolutely so rude, and it's one hundred percent true. <laughs> sure. Yeah, you Suck guys, it. you guys have essentially a pet. Okay, give us a timeout. <laughs> uh, I want to pull the timeout lever on all. People who are shitty to parents on planes. Mm -hmm. I will say the worst people are in first class. The worst. You know, they get mad at this kid. They have this whole thing where I'm spending this kind of money and why do I have to listen to this kid? And she's not a monster, but both times we flew to Boston, not to judge, <laughs> but both times in first class, uh, you know, we save up and, okay, we'll do that for the holidays. We'll get the first class tickets for all of us. We had a woman who is, we can see her texting because it's like free Wi-Fi. This kid w is screaming and the mother's doing nothing. Are you I joking? can read you it can with her diamond-encrusted fucking fingers no. and her kids and her nanny. Fuck that family. Oh my so god. I, I I was just and I could I could see that and I was like, what? And then of course after the sh after the flights, it's like, oh, she's so sweet. Like to <gasps> us. Like, oh, yeah. I know sick. what you and she I'm not gonna cause sick. a scene, but Rosa's doing nothing but kind of just talking to everybody. She's screaming at certain points, but she's just very She's being a child. She's social. Yeah. Yeah. She likes to do peekaboo. But there was one dude that Rose is just doing peekaboo with the guy while we're flying. Because my wife's in front of me with the Rose next to her, and the guy's just shaking his head like he's shaking his head like someone's peeing on him. And I'm like, sorry, man, she's social. And he just <sighs> looks away. And I'm like, okay, this is going to be, we're, we're hour one of six hour flight. Wow. This is going to be great. So after a while, Rose is fed up with stuff and she starts kind of crying. So I move up the front. I take her out of her seat. I'm like, give her to me. I, she's on me. She's next to the guy. And the guy's like, Fuck! like he's vibrating with <laughs> rage. And I go, hey, man, listen, I'm sorry. And he's like, <clears throat> like, he won't even talk to me, just grunts. Whoa. And then I go to the seat ahead Whoa. of me. And he just snaps and goes, why is she in her seat? Why, don't you, why can't she just be in her seat? I'm like, because she's two, man. And he's like, look, look, I'm like, it's a kid, dude. And everyone else in the first class is like looking at this guy just like, what watch the a fuck movie. is wrong with you? Yeah. Put on the greatest showman and Have, shut up. And then he just like, why? Is, and we're like, it's a kid. And he's like, I, kids, I, I got four kids. I know. And it, to this day, There's if I was a betting man, I would bet he has no kids. Yeah. We just ignored him. So yeah. it's like, that's. That the longest time out ever, probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, we have all evolved now as parents. We're all better parents because we did this together. I think I've learned a lot, even though there was no information given <laughs> and no advice <laughs> handed out. But I feel like I've grown to be a better human being and a better parent. So thank Did you it. so much, Matt. Dude, it's so awesome to be on this show, and I love what you guys are doing. Yeah. And I hope uh, you guys get all the listeners because we need more shit like this, you know, parenting for the real world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, plug away, Matt. What do you want to plug? My special, Doug, is on uh, YouTube now. It's named after a terrible father I met on vacation. <laughs> Great. I was a father. And then you can follow me on at Bronger on Instagram and uh, at mattbronger.com slash tour for all my dates. Wonderful. Awesome. Thank Thanks, you guys. so much, buddy. Thank you. Well, that was great. What a, what a treat to chat with Matt. So funny. So funny. Enjoyable. It's like... Uh, <laughs> Dad time. Yeah. It was, of, it was dad time. I know. Time. Sometimes I feel a little left out. Yeah. We'll get you. We'll get yeah, you we'll a get mom. You. We need more moms, but moms are really busy. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Dads are all. Dads we're, are we're available. Got time. Thrilled to have him tall, you know, take a presence. Mm hmm A presence. I would love to get his wife on, though. Oh, oh yeah. She's great. Yeah. She's so fun. She's that's, delightful. That's that. Maybe that's season two. We circle back and do all of and the we wives do of every oh, single the partners, spouse, the, yes. all the spouses of the people we've had on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I love that idea. All right, we've got season two <laughs> planned. <laughs> Roll out the contracts. Oh, hey, buttheads, listen. Give us your own circle time story by calling us at four two four five seven zero kids. That's four two four five seven zero kids, or email us at I love my kid at wondery dot com. Uh, give us your story, or you can just vent. And don't forget to start it off with I love my kid, but, and maybe we'll use it on the show. And go on over to the YouTube uh, channel for Wondery. You can watch all of our episodes and you can see our beautiful smiling faces on their YouTube channel. And remember to subscribe to that as well. Well, I've been Kurt Brownoller. I've been Megan Gailey. And I'm Chris Garcia. And remember, your kid is going to eventually resent you no matter what you do. <laughs> <laughs>